first, we turn to the race for governor. Miami Beach Mayor Philip Levine jumped into the race this week, joining a crowded field of candidates. One of those candidates is here with us this morning. Now, Andrew Gillum is the mayor of Tallahassee. Gillum was born in Miami, but attended FAMU in Tallahassee. And while still in college, he was elected to the Tallahassee City Commission. He was just 23 when he was elected and mayor again in 2014. You were elected to the city commission yes. when you were 23, mayor in 2014. Yep. You're old now. No, you're not it, that old. Well, you know, actually, uh, uh, I helped start a group of young electeds between the ages of 18 and 35, and I aged out. It was such a sad thing to be a veteran amongst electeds uh, at, at 30, 35. So let's, uh, this is, I see this as sort of an introduction for yes, folks, indeed. even though you're born from here. Yeah. Talk, where, where, talk about your roots here in sure, Miami. Sure, yeah. I was uh, born just a little bit down the street, uh, area called Richmond Heights uh, in South Dade. Uh, went to Vineland Elementary. Uh, uh, Frank C. Martin uh, for sixth grade, and then my family moved uh, to Gainesville, Florida. But uh, I'm one of seven kids, all boys, one girl, my baby sister, number five of seven, the first in my family to graduate from high school, uh, the first in my family to attend and graduate from college. My brother and sister came behind me and did the same at, at Florida A&M University. She did, and um, it's, uh, I'll tell you, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm real passionate about public education is because I know the role that a good public education can play play in breaking the cycle of intergenerational poverty. Um, uh, but, but Miami, a lot of my formulative years were spent down here. I've got more cousins than uh, any of us can count, and Ghouls, Perrine, uh, Overtown, uh, LaRanger, you name it. So uh, I, I know this part of the state pretty good. All right, so why are you running for governor? I tell you, I've been in Tallahassee, first obviously as a student, uh, and a student organizer. I mean, when I got to Tallahassee, I spent a good deal of time protesting down at the Capitol. First, it was uh, the One Florida Initiative uh, mm -hmm. under Jeb Bush, and then uh, we had the three-tier, the rearranging of the state university system when we got mm -hmm. rid of the Board of, uh, of Governors and instituted mm -hmm. these individual boards of trustees, and then obviously the 2000 election. Uh, those are sort of er early years, but very intense levels of political engagement. Watching this legislature these last 20 years in the governor's uh, office, particularly these last seven, where we've failed to expand Medicaid for one and a half million folks, we've had a governor who's been a climate denier in spite of the very present and real threats that climate change uh, 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 presents for this area of the state but for the entire peninsula uh, what we've seen happen with uh, 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 legislation like 7069 where you've got a wholesale taking of public money from public schools construction dollars which uh, should be charter going, going to charter schools right. um, um, I mean we felt the impacts of this uh, and unfortunately I think too much of these decisions have have been only philosophical well, let's, and let's not made in the best interest of the government. Let's talk about education. You brought it Absolutely. up a couple of times. So, you know, there is an argument that is often made that why should you trap particularly African-American kids who are in failing schools, why trap them in those schools? Why not give them the option of being able to go to a private school with those dollars? Well, I'll tell you, what, what our first and fundamental commitment has to be to, uh, no matter what side of the tracks folks are born on, what their parents did, they all ought to have access to a high-quality public education. And so to answer that question, I would say, why wouldn't we double down on our investments in public education? Right now, we have leadership in Tallahassee that refers to our schools as failure factors our teachers as evil. Uh, we have one of the lowest starting pays in the nation. We have uh, fewer dollars spent per pupil than almost any other state out there. And so, um, to me, it feels so like it's a money the issue, though? Is it just about we need to throw no, more money in no, education? No, no, no. It's absolutely not just the money. It's also the system and the culture that we built there. So, for instance, I'm against high-stakes testing, which, by the way, don't tell us what our kids know, but how well they take a test. Um, we also are doing what I think are very, very harmful things by grading the schools um, based off of how students perform on those high stakes tests, by the way, uh, as scientists have increasingly come to say they don't tell us what our kids know. And so what I would suggest is that we would have an education system, one that starts earlier. The state already regulates early childhood education, but it's simple things like do you have roaches? Are you filling the, the, the sockets? Uh, whereas we know that over 90% of brain development happens over the course of human life between the ages of zero and five. Our kids are literally starting kindergarten 
ready to learn or not. 40% in this state starting not ready to learn. And guess what? That gap grows uh, through, their, through their matriculation between kindergarten and high school. All right. Let me, let me get you. Obviously, I mentioned that Philip Levine officially entered the race. Yeah. I think he's been running for, for sure. quite a while. Sure. What is your assessment of your, your opponents, Philip Levine, Graham, uh, Gwen Graham, yeah. and um, uh, Andrew King? Yeah. Well, all uh, all nice people. Um, and what I know makes Phillip, you better than them? Well, I, I'll just say, I mean, whether it's better or not, I don't know. But I will tell you, for 15 years, I have really led by my values. Uh, we have lost Democrats, this office of governor, for 20 years, right? The last two times we've lost by fewer than one point. Um, and we tried this whole regional, let's get a South Florida, let's get a Central. This is not about regional politics. This is about finding a candidate where voters see themselves and their experience reflected in them. I'm the only candidate in this race who's not a millionaire. I don't have a famous last name and I can't stroke my own check. I've got to run this race and win this race the old-fashioned way, and that is getting out, meeting as many people as I can, talking to them about my vision for the state of Florida and how we make it happen. I believe that my experience growing up in this state, my home state that I love more than I can articulate, what it's given to me and the opportunities that it has presented as a regular person, I believe that experience is much more like the regular voters of this state than anybody else in the race. It, we're seeing in Tallahassee in the legislature, you know, a lot of dysfunction. Yeah. Individuals, particularly two Democrats just recently, yeah. having to step down and resign, State Senator Clemens, you know, when he's caught having an affair with a lobbyist, or Daisy Baez, state representative down here, who did not live in a district and lied about it. What is wrong with Tallahassee and that culture within the legislature, and how would you fix that? Well, I'll tell you, I, I don't think much of this is new. I mean, I think uh, battles over where members live have raged on for decades, right? I, I knew the climate uh, is obviously changing. What I would say is we have built an environment in Tallahassee, and, and I say Tallahassee, not the Tallahassee I'm necessarily mayor of, even though we have our challenges, but Tallahassee, the state capital, where frankly corporations, big money to interest, run roughshod. This whole idea of campaign finance reform, limiting the amount of money that can come into hard accounts, well, the hard accounts is not where the trouble is happening. It's in all of these individual committees where you can get powerful interests that are on auto deduct every month into the campaign of Adam Putnam and some other Republicans giving 100,000, 150,000, 250,000 with business before the state of Florida, big business before the state we of have, Florida. We only have a couple minutes left, but I do want to raise this issue. Yes. You said Tallahassee, the city itself, has some challenges. Absolutely. There is, people may down here may not know it as well. You're dealing yeah. with it up there. There is an FBI, a longstanding FBI investigation yeah. going on into city government there. Yeah. City managers are under investigation. Mm -hmm. It seems to be far-reaching. You were in, in the unenviable position of having to say, I'm not under of FBI course. investigation. Yeah. That's not a good look for no, a candidate. No, it's, it's, it's never a good look. And by the way, I am heart sick uh, by having my community where we have never even had an elected official or an appointed official in our government so much as found responsible or guilty of an ethics violation. Now to be thrown into the space where we have questions around whether or not there have been illegal dealings amongst Have there been illegal dealings? Do you well, believe that? We, I, I, I know that I have not done that. I've been elected for 15 years in our city and our city government for the right reasons, not by doing wrong, but by standing up for the things that I ran on and trying to make my community but a better place. But if it turns place. out that there are there was illegal dealings going on with the manager or with others around you, then, does that not speak to your leadership? Why did you not see that, root that out? No. Isn't it? Doesn't it reflect in some way on you? Well, I will say, as I said, for serving for 15 years in my government, we've never had anybody with an ethics violation, so much as an ethics violation, let alone anything criminal. I don't know, and I don't want to get ahead of what we know. We know there have been, I don't know, 15 or 20 or so subpoenas. Um, they've involved other individuals and one elected official, unfortunately, um, not myself. Um, my hope is, is that we ought to find out if there was something that went wrong. We ought to find it out, and we need to root it out because our community, frankly, is too good of a community to have its reputation, its longstanding reputation as a leader on so many things soured by the actions of a few. And you're in this race for the long haul. I'm here for the long haul, you man. You can say, you, even though you, say, you talk about not being a millionaire, you've got a lot of rich candidates you're running up against. I, I know it, but we've got more individual contributors in this race than anybody else running. And you know what? I will take those numbers. Uh, 
that we can translate into volunteers, into activists, and the folks who will arrive with five other individuals at the poll any day. Listen, we're talking about one point, maybe 1.3 million voters in total, right? And a number of these folks want to win the governor's race. They're motivated, they're uninspired by much of what we've put in front of them. I had people this last weekend at the Democratic State Convention showing up with other candidate stickers on, taking those stickers off and saying, we're with you, Gillum. I didn't know you before. I hadn't met you, but you're the kind of candidate I want to get behind. Andrew, that's why we're out running, and that's why I'm going to make my way over this entire state. Andrew Gillum, thank you. This is the first, so yeah, I'm sure you'll be back many times. To it. We'll Looking talk more about the issues as well. Absolutely. Andrew Gillum, thank you very much for your time. Up